This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you some news about my Stepper Motor development platform. In my previous video regarding this platform, I have already shown you how it is assembled, what are the parts that it is made of and uh, what it can do. And now in this video I'm going to show you a new feature that I have recently implemented. And then uh, this uh, feature is very useful and it has been requested many times on my channel. So now on this uh, development platform it is available and of course you can uh, translate this to your own uh, stepper motor uh, circuit. So it doesn't have to be implemented on, on this uh, specific circuit. It can be done uh, on any stepper motor related circuits but uh, I built this uh, platform specifically for the purpose of uh, testing, writing and developing uh, new uh, Arduino compatible uh, codes uh, for stepper motors. So here you can see that uh, I have uh, bare uh, PCBs and this is like a semi-assembled and this is the assembled PCB. So I just want to show you the features uh, quickly. So if you see this video before seeing my previous video, then uh, this is a kind of a recap uh, for uh, the board and its uh, components. So first of all, these nice printed circuit boards are provided by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. So if you want to replicate uh, this project, you can find uh, my project and all the relevant files and resources on my PCBWay project website, go ahead and uh, order this board uh, from PCBWay so you can build this very exact board and then you can have your own development platform for stepper motors. Or if you have your own project, head over to their main website and check out their services. And apart from uh, PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly, you can also find some other services such as 3D printing or CNC machining. So head over to their website and check out their services. So right here on this board, uh, I have uh, the components uh, loosely placed on the surface so nothing is assembled. So that is just to show you the components here. So this is the ready-made development platform and this works and uh, you will see it in action in a few minutes. So this is how it looks like. But then uh, what it is made of is on this PCB. So then on this uh, board you can see that we have a stepper motor and that is this guy here uh, or its uh, sibling, a NEMA 17 uh, stepper motor. Uh, I wanted to make the board uh, quite uh, tiny so I chose this uh, pancake uh, style stepper motor and then you can see the shaft inside there. So on that shaft uh, there is a small magnet, not on this specific but here. Uh, on the other side there is a magnet and the reason for that is that uh, this development platform has a AS5600 uh, magnetic uh, encoder module so this is like an off-the-shelf module but kind of the same circuit is uh, placed on this part of the PCB so this sensor is sitting there so when the magnet is rotating about this area this is perfectly in the center then we can detect the displacement or the rotation of the shaft of the stepper motor. So basically we can uh, have a feedback of the position. So that's uh, done by this AS5600. And then of course the motor has to be driven with something. And I have this module, TMC2209, or sometimes it's known as uh, silent stick or similar uh, nicknames. So this is a Trinomix uh, chip, a German manufacturer. And then uh, yeah, this is a simple module from uh, AliExpress. And the good thing about this is not only that it can uh, drive the stepper motor with an amazing uh, silent uh, movement, but we can communicate with it via uh, serial communication. Uh, so that's very nice because we can send commands and uh, settings to it via the uh, TX and RX uh, pins of the microcontroller. So we can read and write uh, stuff on this uh, also. So it's not just 
sending step and direction pins uh, to, to the motor driver, but it's also uh, sending settings such as micro stepping and uh, other stuff. So then of course uh, we have to communicate with this stepper motor driver and uh, I chose this powerful STM32F401 uh, microcontroller. I use this in many of my projects because it has a good uh, clock speed, a lot of uh, memory, it has a USB-C uh, connection, a lot of GPIO pins, a lot of peripherals in it and uh, yeah it's a very good board and it's uh, relatively cheap so it's good to use this. And then we want to display some information so I chose this uh, relatively cheap but uh, quite nice uh, graphical uh, monochrome uh, LCD. So this is just a simple uh, display it communicates with the microcontroller uh, via uh, SPI so yeah that is nice and uh, yeah it's not colored or anything but we can communicate with it with a relatively high speed uh, so we can update the information on it uh, with uh, high speed and uh, there are available libraries for it so it's easy to program it and then this is one of the rotary encoder modules that i have recently uh, designed and uh, showed on my channel so this is a debounced module uh, but uh, wh what i use it for is to select uh, things uh, or set certain values uh, on the display and so on and so on so this is to yeah give some values for the uh, stepper motor and uh, i designed this board in a way that uh, you don't have to use this uh, with this uh, platform it was a question a few times uh, under my videos or in uh, private messages so actually you can buy this module from aliexpress uh, which is almost the same module. Uh, it is kind of debounced with these uh, RC filters, but it doesn't have like a Schmidt trigger circuit, which I have. Uh, but it has the same uh, pin layout, so you can use this instead of uh, using my design. So you don't need to yeah, purchase this if you don't want to. This is just some fancy thing. And then obviously we have two buttons. These are 12 by 12 millimeter buttons. And they are used also to practice uh, stuff uh, with this uh, platform. So you can use them as start and stop button or yes, no buttons or yeah, whatever you program uh, them. And then yes, uh, so this is the fully assembled board. You can see we have some nice uh, connector here. I just connected the uh, stepper motor uh, to it. And then I put uh, this wheel on the stepper motor so I can rotate it. And uh, this uh, zip tie is also used to, yeah, we can read the position of it easily on the video. And then one thing I did not uh, show with this uh, board in the background because it's hard to show the components. Here I have my small uh, buck converter, which converts the input voltage uh, to 3.3 volts. And with this uh, small jumper, we can uh, short the output of this 3.3 uh, watt uh, voltage source to the ref rest of the circuit like this and the reason why i did it is because uh, sometimes you want to have the board as i show it uh, right now and you want to power the motor and at the same time you want to connect this to the computer because you want to program it and uh, test it but then you don't want to use an external power supply to supply the 3.3 volt components and also supply the 3.3 volts via USB because that would lead to yeah bad things on your circuit. The magic smoke would come out. So then you can cut off the 3.3 volt and uh, just leave it as it is. So now I'm doing that. So now the output of the regulator is not connected to the rest of the circuit but you have to have a supply either by the USB or here by the 3.3 uh, volt pin and that will feed uh, the AS5600 uh, right there uh, the VCC to this so the logical voltage and then the display and then also the pull-up voltages uh, for the yeah, controllers so that's that so then uh, Let's go closer to this board and then I show you what is the news about this uh, circuit board and the program. Alright, so I have everything connected uh, regarding the power supply. 
So I just arranged everything, so hopefully you can see the screen. So I just uh, turn on uh, the, the power supply. And now you can see that the screen is on. So let's see what is written there. So the message is printed. So here we can see the following information. Uh, the total means the total uh, angle of rotation of the shaft of the uh, stepper motor. So if we go, go one full uh, turn, that will be 360. If we do two turns, it will be 720 and so on and so on. And if you go in the other way, so counterclockwise, that will be the negative direction. Uh, the absolute line means the absolute angle within the 0 to 360 degrees uh, range of the absolute encoder, because the AS5600 is basically an absolute encoder. And then uh, here the encoder is related to the rotor encoder here. That is just the number of clicks I do, because then uh, what it does is that it sets the target distance in uh, terms of degrees or angle uh, by multiplying the encoder clicks by 45. So when I show you the code, uh, you will see what I'm talking about. But basically, in order to set uh, the target uh, distance or target degrees easily, I just uh, use the number of clicks done by the encoder and multiply it by uh, 45 so then uh, two clicks will be 90 which is like 90 degrees a uh, turn in the positive direction and so on and so on so the fun part of uh, this circuit is that now I implemented a rudimentary PID uh, controller on this and the algorithm is actually very similar to the algorithm that I showed for my uh, DC motor uh, demonstration but uh, here we have a stepper motor and uh, in ideal cases you would not need a PID controller for a stepper motor because if you send the stepper motor to a certain uh, position and your system is properly sized and uh, uh, implemented then uh, the stepper motor should be precise uh, you can think about these 3d printers they don't have any active encoders or similar things but they can print for days uh, without doing any mistake and you will get the perfect uh, stuff out of your 3D printer. So, but here I implemented a PID uh, algorithm because there was a lot of questions during the years. Uh, what if we want to have PID controller for a stepper motor? So here it is. So first what I do is that I click uh, a few clicks with the encoder and uh, this is five clicks. And you can see that that is 225. So you can clearly see that 5 times 45 is 225. And you can see that the angle is now at 0 degrees because that's the startup uh, value for the motor. So then if I press in the encoder, uh, that will allow the code to try to go to the target value. So this is now our target value, uh, which should be at the end of the day, uh, close to this or the other way around this total value should be close to the target value and uh, just before doing the demonstration I have to let you know that I in the code I allowed plus minus one degrees uh, deviation from the target value so when I press the button and you don't see this perfectly stopping at 225 degrees uh, that is simply because I was a bit more tolerant towards the uh, target distances or set points. So let me press this and let's see what happens. So now you can see that from here we get uh, 225 degrees. So it's a relative uh, uh, displacement from here, but uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. And uh, the motor was driving itself or the driver was driving the motor. Uh, until we reached 224 degrees or 224.47 uh, which is within one degrees of the target distance. So now the, the funny part of the PID is that uh, actually the motor is supposed to yeah, like maintain its position. So I show you something funny. I just hold down the board and I do this. 
So as you can see, if I turn the shaft, you will see that, of course, the degree will uh, decrease. And I hold it here. The motor is fighting. And if I release this, then uh, the motor will return to the target position. And this is simply because the PID is now active. And its only goal is to read the encoder, check the target distance. And as long as there is a distance within a defined tolerance between the set point, the target distance, and the distance or position of the shaft, it will drive uh, the stepper motor until it uh, reaches the set point. And it uh, works in the other way. So now I increase the angle. And now, now it knows that it has to, to return. So either I do positive or negative uh, rotation here, it will always try to find its uh, target. And it works in the other way as well. So now I do this. So this should uh, cause a counterclockwise rotation. And now you can see that the motor came back. And uh, this is now the, uh, the current position. It's within one degrees of the set point. And it did what it has to do. So if I go forward, then it will try to find its way backwards and also the other way. So that's uh, really nice. And uh, also you can see that it's not super fast. So it returns with a certain delay, but that is because I haven't spent uh, too much time with uh, optimizing the PID parameters. But once I would uh, optimize it, then I could have a very fast response, but uh, for this demonstration, it doesn't matter. So you can see that now uh, we have a PID controlled uh, stepper motor. So it's a closed loop uh, control, if you want to call it like that. So it works uh, very nicely. So now what I'm going to do is that I will move to my computer and I will show you how this thing works. And uh, since the microcontroller also sends this total uh, distance value and the target value to the serial port. I will show you how this behaves when you yeah, set the target value and how you can plot these numbers because it's very interesting when uh, you use the serial plotter and you plot uh, these values and the motor is approaching uh, the target value because since you have the encoder on the back side of the motor, uh, you can constantly monitor its uh, position. And then it looks very nice as you have like a almost exponential curve of the position that is going towards the target position. So let's go to the computer and uh, let's see how the code is uh, built and how the uh, position can be printed on the serial plotter. So let's start with the code. And since I have uh, explained most of the code already in my previous uh, video on this uh, development platform, I will uh, do the explanation a bit uh, quicker. But uh, first uh, we need to include a few libraries so you can uh, see them here. And then I immediately start uh, defining different uh, pins uh, for the SPI2. Because due to the alignment of the components of the PCB, it was more comfortable to use uh, the SPI2 on this uh, specific uh, microcontroller. So I just uh, defined uh, those pins uh, for the LCD. And then uh, down here below, uh, I define or declare the SPI2. So we will know that uh, PB15, PB14 and PB13 will be used for the uh, SPI pins. So the uh, clock, the master in and the master out uh, pins. And then uh, we have this uh, U8G2 uh, library for the display and this uh, specific uh, type of uh, display is used. And then this is how an instance is uh, created. And then uh, here, still regarding the display, I just define a font color. And then if you use this uh, platform that I developed, then uh, these have to be the same because uh, they are like physically connected to these pins uh, via the PCB. And then I left a comment here that uh, when you choose an encoder, it's good to use the 12 uh, PPR uh, type of uh, encoder. Because if you have, for example, the four, uh, 24 PPR, uh, that might uh, work a bit uh, funnily. And then here we have the typical 
variables for the rotary encoder and then some other uh, variables. And then if we go below, uh, we will have to take care of the TMC2209 uh, step promoter driver. So first, uh, I know that for the driver, I will use the serial 2, so I just uh, define it. And uh, then the RX pin is the PA3 and the TX uh, pin is the PA2. And uh, then, since I use uh, this uh, driver, uh, I found a nice library, TMC stepper. So I include that uh, library as well. And then uh, the stepper motor driver has a few more pins that I need to define. So I define them and then I define some other stuff such as uh, the serial underscore port is the serial two, uh, which we declared above here. And then uh, the driver address, uh, which is uh, set according to the micro step one, micro step two uh, pins, both are pulled to ground. So then zero uh, B zero zero is the address. And then uh, this, uh, this is the current sensing shunt resistor on the driver board itself on the TMC2209. And then uh, this is, as I wrote it here, it's an R110 uh, resistor. And then that has to be uh, defined here. And then, uh, yeah, these are the micro stepping pins. Since I used the uh, micro stepping uh, through the UART and not through the pins, it doesn't matter uh, if the, these pins are there or not, but uh, let's just de define them. And uh, the shaft is the shaft rotation direction. Since uh, I deal with the uh, TMC driver in this part, I left uh, this uh, variable here. And then uh, we create an instance called the driver, and that uh, instance will depend on the serial port, the current sensing resistor, and then the address of the driver. And actually, this would be enough to drive the stepper motor. And in this very example, I will just use uh, the TMC stepper library. But uh, there is an alternative way to drive the stepper motor driver by just uh, simply uh, using the Excel stepper library. And I will also show how that works. But uh, since we also want to use the Excel stepper library, then we have to include it. And then we also create an instance here, which is called stepper. And then uh, I have some uh, different variables here, uh, which is the button control, if I want to control uh, things with the button, but uh, there are no corresponding functions for it. So actually this can be uh, deleted here because I obviously recycled an older code. And then uh, do intro. Well, uh, I made a huge function which uh, checks uh, the driver if it works and checks if the communication works. So if you want to check the intro or kind of a demo uh, before actually driving the motor, then this has to be set true. I set it to false because it's not necessary. And here I have again a bunch of uh, things from, an, from a recycled code. Uh, one of my most uh, popular video is for this uh, AS5600 uh, magnetic position encoder and in that code you can uh, see these uh, variables so I'm not going to explain them because these are needed to communicate with the uh, AS5600 encoder and then again a set of uh, recycled code uh, since again for this I have a related video, it's just for a DC motor instead of a stepper motor. I'm not going to explain how uh, the PID works because I explained it already. And uh, we just apply the exact same principles but on, on a stepper motor. So instead of setting the speed and uh, regulating the speed of a uh, DC motor by changing the PWM value of the DC motor driver, here we will uh, change the speed of the stepper motor by sending different speed settings uh, to the stepper motor driver. And this is done basically real time. Uh, so yeah, you will see how it works. But I'm not going to explain this uh, part. And then uh, we have to start up a lot of things in the setup. So this is the legit USB uh, serial. We have to start it and then I just uh, print some demo message. And then uh, I start the SPI2, which will be needed for the display. And then I print a bunch of stuff uh, on the display after uh, setting uh, things up. So yeah, 
I set the display, I set the contrast, the font mode, and uh, blah blah blah. So the, these have to be just uh, set as it is. And here uh, you can see that uh, previously I used the larger font, uh, but now since I want to print uh, four lines of information, uh, that would not work with this large font. So I just use a smaller font here. And then, as I said, we print a lot of things. So those are first, uh, uh, like, passed uh, to this uh, draw string uh, function. And then once we put everything in the buffer with these lines, then the buffer is actually passed uh, towards the display. And then uh, this line actually does the, the real printing. And then we have to take care of the stepper motor driver, of course. So here uh, we have uh, the serial to uh, begin and actually here this line is via the hardware serial so if you have a secondary hardware serial and if you use my platform again this is what you have to use but uh, I left uh, this here because if you happen to define a software serial which is totally doable uh, by using this TMC stepper library then uh, you have to start the serial like this so I just left it here uh, just to be able to uh, use this code with uh, just a breadboard uh, assembled uh, stepper motor driver uh, circuit uh, but then of course you have to figure out the connections and everything yourself but at least you can have a code which works uh, off the shelf or outside the box and then uh, yeah a bunch of pins are defined uh, as outputs which are used for yeah controlling different things and then uh, we put both micro step pins low because as I said they are on ground uh, so now since they are on ground these uh, also assign the address for the driver and then uh, we enable the driver and then we start uh, sending settings or pushing settings to the stepper motor driver via UART so first we start uh, the driver and then I just send a bunch of settings uh, I will not explain these you can read the uh, documentation uh, but yeah uh, these are sent and then also since we might use Excel stepper I put the example here for Excel stepper uh, library so this is what you can do and then uh, after uh, sending the settings to the uh, TMC driver here I want to read them back so uh, this part is that so I basically with these lines here I query uh, these values from the driver and then uh, I print it with the serial.print uh, function so I can see if the settings which we set here are the same when we read them so that uh, just tells us that the communication is fine and then uh, yeah these are just the pin modes for the different controls on the on the board and then we have an interrupt pin uh, for one of the rotary encoder and then uh, since we have the AS5600 we have to take care of the I squared C so that is the wire uh, library here and then I set up a faster clock speed just to uh, be able to read the, the sensor quickly and then uh, this is done so we can start the work so this is again from my old AS5600 uh, video and presentation. First we have to check if the magnet is there. Obviously it's there. Uh, and then here we have this do intro part. Uh, I don't uh, run this so now this is actually left as false. So I don't need to go into details and if you want to see what is inside this function uh, you can check it uh, in the code. Uh, but yeah, I can unfold it. So we print different things on the display and then drive the motor with different stuff with uh, the TMC stepper library and also with the Excel stepper library. So uh, both of them work and yeah, everything is fine. And then I just do a first reading with the magnetic encoder. So that will be used to tear the position. So everything will set to zero and then I make sure that everything is set to zero. We wait two seconds and then we arrive in the in the loop. So at first I just show what happens in the loop. So each uh, time we check if the rotary encoder button was pushed. And then with each uh, loop iteration we will calculate the PID parameters, drive the motor accordingly. 
Uh, and inside the drive motor function, we actually drive with the UART uh, driver. So not by the access stepper library, but if we want to use the access stepper library, then we have to make some changes in this function. I will show what, and I will ha have to uncomment this. So this, uh, when the access stepper library will take over. And uh, each iteration, we have to read uh, the angle of the uh, position angle of the uh, magnet. So we will know where the shaft of the motor stands. And then uh, a little bit less frequently, every 125 uh, milliseconds, uh, I print the most up-to-date information on the, on the LCD. So we can see where the motor stands. And uh, to do some more spectacular uh, plotting, which I mentioned when I showed you the board, uh, I print uh, some parameters on the serial terminal, which is the target position and then the actual position. So we will see how it works. So first function here is uh, check the rotary button. This is the same as uh, I use, I've been using for years. So first I use the digital read, read uh, the button of the rotary encoder. And if the button value is one, and if the elapsed time since the last press is more than one second, then I enter the function. If uh, the pulse from the button press comes uh, within less than a second, then that is considered as bouncing. So we kind of, with this uh, simple line, we kind of debounce uh, the button. And this can be done with any button. So then uh, this is what I uh, told you when I showed the display, that uh, the target position is 45 times the number of clicks on the uh, rotary encoder. So if I do uh, three clicks that will be 135 degrees and so on and this is just to uh, be able to set up uh, like a large or high uh, target position quickly instead of turning the encoder whatever times let's say 100 times I just need to turn it twice or click it twice so yeah this is how the function looks like and then how to update the LCD this is also like a quick and lazy implementation uh, I print these on the uh, display first, just uh, to be uh, like consistent. So these are the text parts and then the variables come here. So these are just, yeah, how I place the cursor and then I print uh, the actual value of the variable. And once everything is like uh, done, I just uh, send the buffer to the display. So the display is basically updated and that's that. So the rotor encoder, this is the ISR, so the interrupt service uh, routine. So this is uh, called when we rotate the rotor encoder. So we read the current status of the CRK pin, and then uh, we do some status check on, this, uh, on the CRK pin. And then based on this uh, outcome, if the DT pin, so the other uh, pin, uh, has this uh, status. So if it fulfills this uh, condition, then the rotor encoder was uh, rotated in the positive direction. So we increase the value. Otherwise, it was rotated uh, counterclockwise. So we decrease the uh, number of clicks. And then we update the uh, CRK uh, position or value. And then we are done. So then you can see that this is a wall function to handle the change of the variable via the rotor encoder. So as it's written here, uh, this code is for the AS5600. I'm not going to explain this because I explained this very carefully in a previous video. Uh, you can find it, check the link in the description. This very exact same link is there. Or if you are supporting me on Patreon, then this whole code is uh, available for download. So you can just download it as is. Then this link becomes clickable. So then you just click on this and uh, you will be forwarded to my website where all this code is available. So then how does the driving of the motor work? So first of all, uh, we have this control signal uh, value uh, or variable, which will be calculated by the PID algorithm. I will show you uh, soon. But uh, what this does is that it will tell the uh, T1 
TMC driver to set the shaft to false, which is uh, counterclockwise direction. And that is because the control signal is negative. And if the control signal is uh, positive, so it's larger than uh, zero, uh, then the shaft is true. So the, we go to, con uh, to the clockwise direction. And uh, I just put a note here before anyone complains in the comment section. This can be your homework. The control signal equals zero is not handled on purpose, but obviously if it's zero, so that should be an else branching here, uh, then the motor has to be stopped. So yeah, but actually we don't uh, need to care about that uh, here because this is just the direction. So uh, when it's zero, it's, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. So then uh, here, this is basically again using the output of the PID algorithm. And as you can see, I actually calculate the absolute value of the control signal. And uh, the reason why I do that is because uh, we act already determined the direction of the of the motor by uh, assigning either false or true to the shaft uh, here and uh, the v actual uh, function only accepts unsigned integer as an input or as an argument which means that we cannot pass negative numbers to this so what we have to do is we have to first pass uh, the direction uh, to the step promoter driver and then the speed, which is only a positive number. So then, uh, you, as you can see, I got the absolute value of the control signal again, and then uh, I multiplied it by five just to make the motor to move faster. Uh, and then that's what I pass uh, as the speed uh, to the step promoter driver. And uh, I also wrote it here that uh, actually you can just fine tune the PID parameters so you might not need this uh, speed multiplier. But for the sake of this demonstration, uh, I just did this. And uh, if you want to use the access stepper library instead of uh, working with this uh, TMC, uh, then uh, you can like remove these two uh, lines and remove this here and uh, just uh, simply uncomment these two lines. So this guy here, so enable the motor, and then to send the speed. And the access stepper library actually can uh, have negative number in the set speed. So then you can directly pass the control signal. And then uh, I use the 20 times uh, multiplication factor here, because that's what I kind of uh, considered as a good value. So the motor moves really fast and responds really fast if you, for example, turn the shaft uh, with hand. But let's get rid of this now. And then uh, go to the else. So what we have here is that we basically just stop the motor by setting its speed to zero. But uh, there is a bit more deeper meaning uh, behind the else here, because uh, I, I actually wrote it here that uh, we are within plus minus one degrees, because if you uh, think about this uh, absolute value then if the absolute value of the control signal is larger than one so either we are towards minus 1.1 let's say or plus 1.1 then we uh, perform uh, things here otherwise if we are within so let's say minus 0 0.9 or 0 0.9 then the motor will be stopped and that's why you could see that we don't exactly reach uh, the target position because the motor is actually uh, stopped before uh, actually reaching it and you can just change this to yeah 0 0.1 and then uh, you can reach uh, the pot position closer but uh, as i wrote the resolution here you you also have to keep in mind that uh, the stepper motor driver has a, a finite resolution so you cannot just go all the way to zero with this so yeah, you have to be careful how you uh, work with these numbers. But yeah, so if you are within the tolerance, which is like uh, one degree plus or minus, then the function will uh, jump in this uh, part or the condition uh, will jump here and then it stops the motor because we consider that as the reaching of the target. And if you uh, want to use the access stepper library, then you just uncomment these uh, three uh, lines and comment this like this 
and then the access stepper library will be used and uh, the motor will be driven by by the direction and step pins and then finally have uh, we have the PID algorithm and I'm not going to explain how it works because I have a video on that so I don't want to repeat myself so we have the current time which is just the value of the micros right now and then the delta time which is the difference between the time that we read right now and uh, the time which we read in the previous iteration of this uh, function and then uh, we have an error value which is the difference between our uh, total angle so the current position and the target position or set point and then we have to calculate the derivative term of the uh, error value minus the previous error so the difference between the current and the re uh, uh, recent uh, uh, error and we divide it by the time so we get the basically the e dot or error dot because if you have a time uh, derivative that is usually uh, uh, marked or uh, denoted by a, by a dot and then uh, we have an integral of the error which is again uh, done by this uh, function and then uh, based on these values we can calculate the control signal which is just the product of the proportional value and the error value plus the derivative and the e dot and the integral uh, uh, factor and the error integral and then we update the uh, error value and basically that's all and then uh, you can see that uh, I, I printed the control signal just for uh, checking it, but uh, I, I removed it, I commented it, because uh, I don't uh, need it now. But for debugging, it's, it's very nice. So this was basically the code. So let me show you the serial plotter fun, uh, because it's, it's really fun. So I show you this. So I go to the tools and I open the serial plotter. And then you can see that uh, the actual position now is here, zero degrees. Uh, so first I just uh, turn the uh, motor by hand. And you can see that uh, jump because uh, the actual position is now or was uh, different. And you can see that now the target is still zero because that's the default value. But the actual value is here, which is 0 0.62. And the reason for that I explained it is because of of this line here uh, because uh, the tolerance is plus minus one degrees and 0 0.62 is smaller than one so we just uh, stop the motor and I stop it in the other direction so the peak will go downwards or sorry downwards I said and now you can see it goes upwards because it's uh, reaching the uh, target position from the other direction but again now the value of the red line is 0 point minus 0 point 0.53 also it's a it's a larger value than minus one so it's closer to zero so it's not uh, uh, driving the motor anymore because we are within the tolerance and now i set the target value with the uh, encoder so this should be 315 uh, degrees so I press the motor and you can see the jump uh, on the blue line and you can see that the actual value is going there uh, slowly and uh, yeah I can do the other way around so I go back to zero so the blue line will jump down to zero and then the red line which is the actual uh, position will uh, follow it And then uh, we are there so again the position now is 0 0.62 degrees which is within the tolerance so the motor is not moving anymore so yeah this uh, works and again I just uh, move it by hand this work ni works nicely and then go the other way this works nicely as well and as I said, it's not uh, super fast because uh, I haven't uh, tuned the PID parameters. But if you tune it, uh, then you can make the motor very uh, responsive and then it will maintain the, the position or whatever we need to maintain. So basically, this is all that I uh, wanted to show you. Uh, I put a lot of resources and links in the description. So please uh, check the links there. 
and uh, please visit my website and please visit my PCBWay project site because uh, both of these uh, pages have a lot of uh, resources and uh, from my uh, project site you can order this PCB and build it yourself if you want. So you can also develop your own uh, code for step promoter driver or any uh, motion control uh, projects. Uh, I also have a Patreon so if you want to support my work or let's say invest in my uh, future works then please consider supporting me on Patreon. So I hope you like this video, I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.